Welcome, everybody, to another baseball edition of On Texas Football. I'm your host, Blake Monroe, where I'm joined by C.J. Vogel. And, uh, C.J., we're back, man. I mean, we're going to be scatter shooting on Texas baseball today. It was a busy, busy weekend for the Longhorns. It's been busy since our last baseball video what, about five or six days ago. I mean, there's just been so much going on, a huge weekend. Uh, they hosted double-digit recruits. That includes both the portal and and out of high school and then they pulled in a few commitments flipped a couple of kids i mean it, it was like i said action-packed i don't know any other way to put it yeah on both realms right portal and high school recruiting you know guys were flocking into campus i think this was one of the first real weekends for the staff to get multiple guys on campus and you know kind of check out the dish check out the university and it paid off with a number of commitments a couple flips in there too blake so Wherever you want to start, I think there's one big one that we should hit on in the high school world first, uh, and that's Adrian Martinez, or yeah. Rodriguez, excuse me, thinking of football still, but Adrian Rodriguez out of uh, Flower Mound, the shortstop, big time get there. Yeah, without a doubt. You know, one of the top shortstops in the state of Texas, CJ, he's a switch hitter, uh, ended his career batting 430 at the plate. I mean, that's a pretty elite number, man, no matter how you spin it. But here's the thing that, that I've heard as of late is, you know, while he is an elite shortstop, he's also a damn good third baseman. And Texas, what do you know? They need a third baseman. They sure do. Yeah. No, it, 100%. I mean, we were actually running through what could be the lineup here in 2025. And, you know, third base was a place that we kind of questioned. You know, would it be a Casey Borba? Could it be Adrian Rodriguez, it, obviously a long way to go before we finally get to an idea of what this uh, roster and lineup will look like. Uh, but Rodriguez certainly factors into uh, what, that conversation of true freshmen getting on the field very early. I received a, a, a text last night from a coach in the DFW area. Basically said, dude's the best hitter in 6A baseball. He said uh, he's a switch hitter who barrels up everything. He's a tough out, plays with a lot of emotion. That sounds like a pretty good, uh, uh, you know, kind of description of a guy expected to make a large impact early in their career at the University of Texas. And again, you, you went over the numbers of 430 career hitter at Flower Mound, who, uh, yeah, pretty good baseball school, Blake. If uh, For folks who don't know anything about the world of Texas high school baseball, Flower Mound's basically Allen or Duncanville when it comes to the Division One baseball production. Yeah, no, without a doubt. That's a that's a spot on comparison. And the other thing is, uh, and I and I've spoken to some coaches that have played against him, you know, in select ball, some uh people that seem to know him pretty well. He seems like a great kid off the field, too. And yeah. I've had multiple interactions with him. Uh Adrian actually came in on Saturday and then his act his visit was on Sunday, and then he committed Sunday afternoon, but I mean, just a, a great player, both on and off the field, and that speaks volumes uh, to him and his character and the type of kids that Schloss and them are trying to get in. And speaking of great players, CJ, Saturday was no different when it came to commitments. One out of the portal, one out of the high school ranks, both big-time impact players. And let's start with uh, Arizona State's Ethan Mendoza, who, in my opinion, is a big piece to the puzzle. Yeah, 100%. I think last year that second base spot for the Longhorns got a little stale in the offensive production category. Uh, D. Kennedy was a fine player. He's a great young player, uh, but you probably didn't see the spark that you would have liked to have seen out of that second base slot. I think you get a little bit more of that with Ethan Mendoza. Uh, again, out of Arizona State, went to high school at South Lake Carroll, hit 313, had OB OPS of 810, three home runs. Uh, can do it with the glove, has you know the ability to steal some bags as well. So talented piece, Blake. And when you can throw that second base production back into the lineup, you know, I mean, we saw how talented it was when the Clemens was there and you know was just hitting balls out of the park. I'm not expecting Mendoza to do that, but he does give you a piece that can hit the ball around the park a little bit and set up uh, you know, the lineup for some of the big bats, especially in the outfield when it comes to Baylou, Winfield, and Gasparino. Yeah, for sure. And like you said, it shores up the, that middle infield that's just tremendous there because they they were looking for somebody there and something else that they're looking for is pitching pitching yes. pitching pitching obviously the name of the game we saw how it can affect the team especially this past season for the Longhorns they go out and they get one of the state's best left-handed I will just say one of the state's best pitchers period Bryce Navarre out of Montgomery Texas flip from AM, elite breaking ball, a wide variety of pitches in his arsenal, CJ. Just a phenomenal 
get a phenomenal weekend, really, for the Longhorns. Yeah, it, it, it's the off-speed stuff that really stands out to me with him, right? You know, he's not the biggest left-handed pitcher, only about 6'1", maybe 200, 210 pounds at the moment. Uh, so he's not going to overpower you, right? I don't think that's part of his game, Blake, when it comes to the fastball. Maybe, you know, anywhere from 93 to 90 in that range, kind of the low 90s. So he can get it up there, but at the same time, it's that off-speed. It's that breaking ball. It's that change-up, which there's, you know, the in the world of, College baseball, high school baseball recruiting right now, spin rates becoming more and more prevalent everywhere. He's a guy that, you know, hits 3,200, 3,300 on the RPM. So yeah. he can certainly spin it very well. Uh, that will be kind of his MO when it comes to getting guys out early in his career until he kind of builds up that body, get that velocity up a little bit. Uh, but again, very big piece because, again, he was going to end up at Texas A&M if he wasn't at Texas. And, Blake, that's another thing I wanted to mention. Texas has done a great job so far when it comes to getting pieces away from a and and back into this Jim Schlossnagel, uh, you know, kind of recruiting class and, and portal class, what I've noticed a lot of is most of these guys are pitching. Uh, you know, they're, they're pitchers. They're arms. They're guys that are, you know, kind of believing in the Max Weiner kind of development program, the arm farm, if you will. Uh, so that's something I've continued to see that trend uh, carry over right now. The bats will obviously continue to follow, and Texas will go out and, be able to recruit them elsewhere. Um, Rodriguez being the most notable that we just mentioned, the shortstop mm -hmm. out of Flower Mound. But uh, right now, again, the arm farm reputation, I, I think, is preceding itself when it comes to recruits nationwide and other recruiting classes. Uh, obviously, bought into to the to the pitch one time before committing to AM, now doing so again at the University of Texas. And it's, again, I would say uh, Texas fans should be very pleased with that, with the way that pitching got kind of stale over the last few years at the dish. Yeah, without a doubt. You know, I know I know a lot of Texas fans were hoping that they were going to get some of the big time AM players out of the portal. Of course, that didn't happen uh, the way that everybody anticipated because of the hire that AM made. But you are going out there, you're taking some of their best commitments away from them, and you're helping yourself in the meantime. I mean, that, that that's a win win when you look at, you know, a guy like Jack Paris or the two guys that we just mentioned. You know, I mean, they're they're definitely uh, definitely helping and hurting at the same time. Hurting hurting A and M and helping themselves, big deal. Yeah, hundred percent. The other one I wanted to mention, Sam Cozart, the big kid out of uh, North Carolina, uh, pumping 97, 96. He's six foot seven, so the the velocity is going to come naturally there. That's a guy that you know Texas gets some big arms. They they've had big arms, but to know that the development will be there in the ninety seven that you see coming in to college is not going to be the same 97 that you see exiting college is very encouraging under Max Weiner. Hey, one thing that we do need to mention though, it wasn't all sunshine and rainbows, CJ, with a little bit yeah. of bad news last night when it comes to the whole Texas versus Texas A&M baseball uh, duel here. And that's Long Beach State pitcher Miles Patton ended up committing to the Aggies late last night. Obviously one of the better pitchers in the portal this season. Uh, and, you know, I think it even shocked Texas A&M to a degree because, as as I reported last week, Texas was doing really well in that recruitment from everything that I was hearing. Uh, so for for them to pull that off, I mean, you just you got to give kudos to Texas A&M and their staff for doing that. Yeah, that's a big get for them. You know, eleven starts, four and three record, three twenty six ERA. What's most impressive, Blake, is eighty five strikeouts in sixty five innings. So <laughs> this is a guy that can punch you away. He can. Uh, he he's got the stuff that will uh, obviously make it things very difficult for hitters to put it in play, but also hard contact was very rare with Patton. Texas was obviously in on him, and should the Longhorns have uh, you know won that recruitment, you would have probably penciled in for a Friday or Saturday starter in that conversation right now, which I wanted to bring up because I know that Texas has been busy in the world of uh, accumulating arms and who knows what might happen with the MLB draft. They might, you know, obviously see a return or two that wasn't expected, but Thomas Burns, the, the Arizona state transfer, Ace Whitehead, Max Scrubs, but then you have Eli Trott, you know, you have a pin, a pin transfer as well as Will Mercer who returns. So, that, that, that rotation right now has some solid arms, some guys who uh, you look at on paper and you say, yeah, I could certainly see them developing into being a Saturday guy or, you know, a, a weekend guy when it's all said and done. But, Blake, I, I want to get your thoughts on this. Is it too early to, to pin a Friday starter on one of these guys right now? Does Texas have that number one at the moment? I 
You know, I think it is I, for for a few different reasons. Number one, uh, we got we got to see what the arm farm can do because I mean yeah. we we've seen his body of work and it's nothing short of miraculous. You know how how he can turn guys into just amazing pitchers. Number two, we we don't know if they're done yet. There's a lot of names out there that we're hearing being floated around that Texas is still going after. And if that's the case and they get those guys, who knows who steps in and could we see an LBJ return? Yeah. You, you know, you never know. I mean, my, he may want to come back after the year that he had and, and work with Max Wiener and, and, you know, see what he can turn into. So yeah. I, I think there's too many variables there, but as you said, I, I think there's a lot of, quality quality options to say hey these are my one two three guys and you know also we got a handful of guys that can make an impact midweek yeah 100 percent. so that that's kind of where i'm sitting at right now i love again the talent and arms that texas has added to its rotation and the bullpen because again when you add a guy like aiden moffitt from lsu who can hit the upper <laughs> 90s you know it's all about just kind of fine-tuning those uh th those fundamentals those you know kind of uh deliveries if you will when you have the stuff like that, the gas is already in the tank. It's all about learning how to drive the car. So that's, again, where you want to be if you're Texas because you have a tremendous student driving teacher in Max Weiner, right? They'll figure out how to stay within the white lines at some point. Uh, I'm t talking metaphorically, obviously, but uh, I, I do really do like what Texas has done right now. And they might not be done out of the portal, right? There's still a couple other names that Texas is pursuing. I dropped the name over the weekend on, on Texas football, uh, right-handed pitcher out of Ole Miss, Grayson Saunier. Uh, listen, I think he's a talented kid. Uh, season didn't really go his way. He was drafted five, uh, 559th, I believe, to the Texas Rangers two years ago. Um, perfect game at one point. Had him a, a national top 150 player uh, in his recruiting class. Had a 564 ERA, 35 strikeouts and 44 uh, point uh, in two-thirds innings. So, rocky first campaign. Yeah. However, the tools are there. The promise is there. You see that with why he was drafted so early, and there's some really uh, you know, high buzz around him when he committed to Ole Miss. So, again, another arm who's in the portal that Texas is uh, at least considering right now. And we'll see again because there's other options out there that uh, Texas is also talking to. And, you know, with, with baseball, Blake, they move quickly compared to football. <laughs> yeah, without a doubt. And I was told last night to expect Texas to uh, heavily – focus on pitching prospects in the portal going forward uh that they're you know looking at kids from juco all all the way up to those power four conference pitchers that you mentioned um so you know i i just i think it's tough to say who's gonna be where as far as the pecking order goes when it comes to being you know named a starter for whatever day but we know that they have a lot of options to work with and they have a lot of options to still continue to go after. And it doesn't, it doesn't help CJ that they have, or it, I guess you could say it helps tremendously that they have one of the best pitching coaches in the nation <laughs> that, that, to coach all that talent up. That's the ultimate fallback is, you know, <laughs> while there may not be a clear one, two or three right now, you have a lot of guys that have capable innings, capable arms, uh, and a developmental coach that can get them right 100%. Definitely. Well, we've talked about pitching in depth. I want, I'm want. i curious to get your thoughts because I know we've kind of kicked this around uh, since our last baseball video about maybe a projected lineup. We can go over this here. And uh, I, I really liked what, what we were talking about before this. And I want, I want you to share that with everybody, kind of what your projections are as we sit here on July 8th, obviously many, many months before the season begins. But can you share that with folks, CJ? Yeah, and this is all contingent, obviously. The MLB draft is coming up this week. You know, we're waiting on, you know, kind of decisions and results from that draft on what Jalen Flores and Jared Thomas will do. However, while we do not know their future, we do know that they're not yet signed to an MLB team. So we're going to use them both in this exercise just there to kind of give an idea of what this lineup could look like if both were to return to the 40 acres in 2025. Uh, we'll start with DH, go from catcher all the way up to the outfield. I have Kimball Schlu uh, Schlusler at DH, mm -hmm. Rylan Galvan at catcher. So, yep. again, two returning pieces. They'll obviously intermix with one another at the catching position. Uh, Jared Thomas returns to first base. I think that's pretty set in stone. He did a great job at it this year, having moved down from the outfield. Uh, and then Arizona State outfielder, 
Ethan Mendoza, right? We talked about him earlier. That's a, a, a plus bat at the second base spot that you throw in the middle infield. Uh, of course, Jalen Flores, we don't know yet what his deal is. However, we know that Texas would gladly take him back with open arms. And this is a guy who, uh, real quick on Flores, I was reading around on some of the uh, draft blogs, kind of getting an idea of where he projects. The question with him, Blake, is he's got a pretty high swing and miss rate. And I think that right now might be what keeps him out of that top five, top seven rounds and potentially might be what pushes him back to, to, to school, if you will. Yeah. So Flores at shortstop. And then at third base, we mentioned it, uh, Adrian Rodriguez and Casey Borba. I think it's one of the two. I think they will battle it out uh, going into the fall and into, uh, you know, kind of those spring scrimmages as well. And then the outfield. And if you're a Texas fan looking for big bats and speed in the outfield, well, you got all three, right? Eastern Winfield, the transfer out of Louisiana Monroe, uh, second team, perfect game, All-American as a true freshman a year ago. Uh, Will Gasparino returns to center field. And then obviously Max Bailey, the, the reigning Big 12 uh, player of the year out and right. All in all, that's potential to be a very talented lineup. And it could be, you know, one of the SEC's best. I, I'm not going to say it's the best because I do think Texas A&M has a tremendous crop of, uh, of guys coming back, as does Tennessee. So, We'll see about that. But all in all, with the way that this projects, if Flores and Thomas both return, you have to be very pleased if you're Jim Schlossnagel, knowing that your roster is very much intact, especially one through nine, uh, ten, if you will, uh, with a couple backups and, and, and Casey Borbo, kind of Rodriguez in that mix as well. But also knowing that the arms are going to you know, rise to a level in which you haven't seen in quite some time. Yeah, for sure. And I was actually just looking at, uh, you know, you're talking about draft boards here. So perfect game right now has Jared Thomas at 54 in their top 500. Uh, it, what And a couple of interesting notes, I'm getting off subject here, but Texas commit Bryce Rayner out of uh, out of Harvard Westlake in California. They have him as 13. Probably not going to get on campus, unfortunately. <laughs> and then uh, Theo Gillen out of Westlake here in Austin as 29 probably not going to see him on campus as well but very interesting to note that they do have jared thomas on there at 54 uh we've had a lot of texas fans ask where him and flores could go by the and flores they have it 93 at the moment this was a couple of weeks ago they haven't updated it in a while uh i kind of think that's a little high personally but you never know what's going to happen. But one thing that I have heard, CJ, is growing optimism when it comes to Flores and Thomas returning to campus. Ooh. So I think I think your your lineup there, your projected lineup, could be pretty safe. Uh, listen again, and we've talked about it to compete with the A and M's, the Tennessees, the Kentucky, the Floridas. You're going to need a, a deep lineup. And right now, if you are able to return both Flores and Thomas, Texas will have a very deep lineup because. Again, that outfield, Blake, I love it. And I'm not going to get into who's batting first, second, or third. All I know <laughs> is if you're able to put Flores, Mendoza, Thomas, and then Gasparino, Winfield, and Bailu in a, in a lineup together, good luck because that's yeah. a pretty, pretty impressive group. So Definitely. And, hey, I got a couple of other team things I wanted to share. I, originally, we posted these over on ontexasfootball.com over the weekend. And if you're not a member, no better time to join than now. We got great baseball, football, basketball coverage around the clock. $39.95 a year using promo code OTFOG. So check that out. But uh, speaking of, of Max Ballou, he was with USA Baseball over the past few weeks on their collegiate national team. And CJ, I heard some good things about that. Now he's returning back to the Cape Cod League. He's going to finish his summer out there, uh, then obviously return back to campus. He, he misses the MLB draft cutoff by one day, I think is what it is. So he, Texas fans at least get him for one more year. But, I, you know, we're going to see Max be a, a crucial piece of next year's team. And then the other one that I wanted to touch on is uh, Will Gasparino. Now, yeah. he got released recently from that Cape Cod League. A lot of that has to do with those USA baseball players returning. But CJ, he, he just he wasn't doing great at the plate at all uh, there this summer. And I was told that, you know, he's obviously very, very well aware of that. He wasn't happy with his performance. So he's returned to Austin and he's going to be working on, you know, refining that approach at the plate, refining that swing, you know, really trying to figure out what's going wrong there and work at it with 
from what I hear, one of one of the nation's best uh, the, over the rest of the course of the summer. So that's great news for Texas fans. Yeah, it absolutely is. And I think with Gasparino, we saw him at times in 2024. Uh, he just gets a little long with his swing, right? And I think that's why you saw the inconsistency with hard uh, exit velocity, some of that uh, barrels at times he was missing, kind of rolling over on. It, it's a tough thing to do when you're 6'5", six, 6'6", six, six, right? You know, he's a big kid. So shortening Dude. up your swing is easier said than done for a kid that, that size with that length. But again, this kind of extended one-on-one -on -one time that you'll be able to have to get in the cages, work on some T drills and, and get an idea of what was wrong with my swing and where does it need to be for me to feel comfortable at this level that I think that's, that's very important. Yeah, without a doubt. And I, I you know, obviously we're running out of time here, but I, I want to touch on just a couple of other things, a couple of other team notes, new players, CJ will report on August 1st or the majority of them will, uh, followed, you know, a couple of others that will kind of straggle in right after that, but it won't be long, less than a month away before all those new players are on campus. And then lastly, Texas has had a few decommitments lately. And, you know, I, the narrative is always pushed on social media. Ha, ha this school, XYZ school is losing because of XYZ reason. But from what I've been told, you know, the coaching staff just has their certain players that they're looking for, a certain type of player. And, you know, with coaching changes, you don't always fit that mold, unfortunately. And it is what it is. But what can you do? I mean, that's the nature of, uh, of college recruiting. Am I right? Yeah, we see it across every sport. Baseball, no different. So, uh, again, if you're a Texas fan looking at the recent additions, not only to the 2024 or 2025 recruiting class, but the portal as well, I'd be pleased with the arms and the specific needs that they've gone out and addressed. Ethan Mendoza being, uh, you know, I would say the most prominent as well as Easton Winfield. Yeah, for sure. All right, man. Well, that's going to do it for this special baseball edition uh, of, well, scatter shooting baseball here with on, on Texas football. So for CJ Vogel, I'm Blake Monroe, and we'll see you next time.